afternoon, good morning, good evening, <laughs> welcome. Um, I have with me, I'm Pamela Erlin, for those of you who don't know me, I'm a clear conduit and trans channel. And I've been doing this since around age five. What's new about this channeling is that I normally channel Christ conscious beings, and believe me, he is very much so. Um, but I also normally channel fully ascended beings, and I have never channeled a celebrity. So that's what's different about this channeling, and I spent a lot of time with Robin Williams making sure, uh, as he would say it, he was interviewing me <laughs> uh, to make certain that I would properly be the one to uh, bring forth the message, and I'm going to try my best. I have advised him not to make a circus act out of use of my body during this trance, and it was a very funny response that he gave me. <laughs> when I said, please do not drop the F-bomb as many times as you do when you're talking to me. And he said, sure. And he put his hand on his back with his fingers crossed. So um, this channeling may or may not be, uh, this is my disclaimer, um, appropriate for younger audiences. <laughs> uh, we do have some serious topics this hand as well. So we have our lovely facilitator, my friend, Crystal Louise. And um, you can find her at ChriscillaLouise.com. I don't know if you can see the spelling of her name on screen as in, as I can. Um, but I can see the spelling from here. If you can't, um, we'll have Erin spell it out for you. Thank you in advance, Erin. Um, she's a really, really gifted clear conduit channel. Um, and so much in depth for uh, mediumship. She's just really, really a wonderful channel. She, you may recognize her face. She was my facilitator for the Archangel Raphael channeling, um, as well as um, the recent Lear and Feline Hyadian channeling, so Galactic Origin style channeling, starseed beings. So, goodness, I can't wait to see what Robin Williams has to say about starseeds, too, so we can add that to the question list. <laughs> um, I am going to go into trance with this channeling. You know, Robin Williams and I have made an agreement for him not to use the F word as often as he has been lately with me. And he has somewhat, as I said, somewhat with his fingers crossed, agreed to, 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 to pull it in just a little bit. <laughs> and what else? You can, we have already said where you can find you at ChriscillaLouise.com. Answering questions, asking questions. We prefer for them not to be in the chat section of this webinar program because our facilitator cannot follow them as easily that way. And we do have quite a big crowd here. So if you would put your questions with the in the ask a question section, that would be the quickest way, you know, to get an answer. And if it's not already on her list, she will be asking. I'm going to go into this now. I'm out of here. Uh, disclaimer, no promises. His personality is a thousand percent different than mine, and you're going to see that right away. <laughs> Was that you coming in? It was just a bit distortion, so I think that was you making an entrance. But we do have a question for you. Thank you so much for being with us today. It was a sad day. It was a sad day when we lost you. And... We would like to know, what do you now do on the other side of life? Well, it appears that the channel's computer operates much like my brain did. There is no other side of life. There is no other side of anything. I am as I am now, as I was then. You didn't see the quiet me, the reflective, the reflective me. me, the part of me who did not appreciate being seen for humor more than half the time and felt on call to perform. Yet I enjoy making you laugh. 
And laughter is the medicine that always should be in existence. And what an irony it was, and still is, on this so-called other side, as you claim. <laughs> Everything that you could possibly think about is created in real time over here. This dimension operates faster than my human brain did, and that's a lot to be stated. Manifestation is faster. It is a matter of God thinking and feeling here. God is. And in the moment of immersion of all time, God is. Faster than a blink of an eye. You are born and reborn. You can laugh, you can cry, you can sow every seed that you have already reaped. I created many versions of hell, punishment, and then forgiveness and releasing even the belief that I would deserve anything. That I would deserve anything good or bad other than the joy of laughter and wisdom. I'm just thankful. I'm thankful for my wife. I'm thankful for my dad who met me immediately. I'm thankful for some of the beings I didn't even believe in at that time. Every second that you breathe is precious. Stop taking everything so fucking seriously. When you learn to have joy, then you just remember that you're God. You're all the things that reek and smack of contention and hatred and love and joy and disdain and dissonance. And isn't it all beautiful? Aren't you all grand by design? For every moment that you breathe, be grateful that you didn't struggle as I did, behind the scenes and in front of it. And of all the things that you didn't know about my life, and the pure hell that my wife and I endured for the past three years before my passing. It's beautiful here, and it's more beautiful where you are. Stop trying to get out. Just be in it. That's so beautiful. Can you tell us how your life was behind the scenes? On button, off button, faster than the clap. Clap on, cue, laugh. To see my beautiful Susan, permission to turn off. Permission to be. Permission to realize all the beauty that wasn't things. Money and things never meant anything to me. Quiet wisdom. Books. Silence. Riding the bike. Walking in nature. Holding her hand. Looking into her eyes. Waking up to the love of my life and saying good night. Every evening, I would say good night, my love. Which was also my final message to the most beautiful soul on this planet and still is. And just me. But when on screen, my nature was to please you. And the mind is a tricky thing. And when on screen, my role is to make you laugh. 
cause joy. Or if, for any brief moment, I could distract you from the bullshit that is, why not? You want to believe that everything's real and everything's fucked up, so I give it to you. In humor. Until you stop to think. All of who I am is there. All of the deeper messages couched in jokes. <laughs> and you thought. You thought more deeply. And for a brief moment, you found joy. By not taking life too seriously. I don't have time for that. <laughs> Who the fuck has time for that? And why? Well, why do we want that? We tend to do though, but it's a very important message. Do not, to laugh a bit. Well? If you believe any of it's real, go ahead. Does it make you feel better to take anything seriously? You say how beautiful it is on the other side and to live life fully here in the now. What do you think of spiritual awakening and star seeds here on the planet? Why do you believe that was my first and most important role was to show up in form true to nature weird as fuck do you believe it would be different to show up as a Venusian being and then find a way to cause you to relate to yourselves so I weird you out good so I offend you good you're listening you're feeling you're laughing and then you become more human. And then you honor your roles. Then you at least think about things. Important things. Simple things. I know you think I'm complicated and random, but I'm quite simple. And so are you. How does your brain work? You talk so fast, you tell your jokes so fast, and you're just always on your feet. And you're almost a lot similar like Pamela, because she talks and thinks just as fast. But how, how do you do that? Or how did you do that? Hmm. <laughs> I think just peel it on back and open up my brain. I don't know how to express that to you except that the human brain is a uh, fuck. It's a matter of semantics and you're always focusing on your reactions all the time and the only difference between you and I is that I focus on nothing and everything simultaneously as it comes to me. And then in one moment, in a brief childhood glimpse, I one day said, and let me please my mother because she doesn't think I'm funny. And then she says, oh, now I love you. Yay, great. And then, oh, wait, 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 don't do that. Don't go there. And then, oh, now I love you. Great. Oh, nope, that's too much. You're too much. Everything's too much. <laughs> and in the midst of attempting not to get my ass kicked on a daily basis or being bold, bullied or being fully immersed and enmeshed into what is fucked up about this planet, I'd incited instead to embrace it. And you see the randomness of the human brain. You are reacting so quickly. And I believe I probably must slow down now because about 125 people cannot process me. <laughs> but you thought. You felt. You said, what the fuck? You said something and you felt something. And you laughed. I find the randomness that is you and I connect it to a more simple meaning, which is that all of this means nothing. Even Pavlov loves his hope. <laughs> He's on the other side, side of this going, I had hopes for your brain, for fuck's sake. He 
You do make us laugh. You do make us laugh. But what do you mean by that there is no purpose to this, to all of this? Why are we here then? You're here to connect. You're here to forget the alleged seriousness of all of the fucked up nature of this society. You're here to stop clinging so much to what you think is serious. You're here for gratitude. You're here for simplicity. You're here just to be. Be what you want. Be who you are. You're here for love. You're here for joy. You're here for laughter. And you're here to be kind. Be kind. Find goodness and hilarity. Laugh at how fucked up you think things are. Find kindness and be kind even to the people who you believe don't deserve it. And who the fuck are we to discern that are out deserve it? Who are we? Would you be that kind of God? Who would wrathfully slam down the hammer and say, oh, don't laugh or find goodness in that. That's bad. That's wrong. I'm here to lift your limits. Spiritual awakening is not a curse. There are four stages of it currently on this planet. First start out, you wake up to the idea that everything is fucked up. And in that grand realization, throw up your hands. And you start looking for a scapegoat. You start looking for someone to blame. Why is this happening to me? Why me? Oh, that person did it. That person's the fucked up one, not me. Can't be me. Nothing's ever me. And then when you come to release the blame and the shame and the guilting, you understand that there's something in there, a little voice that wants to come out. A little voice. And you start to honor it, no matter what. Stop looking for blame. And then you surrender. And surrender isn't an acceptance that the world is fucked up, therefore you become its victim. That's not surrender. Surrender is throwing up your hands and saying, it's all okay. Surrender is just an acceptance of what is without victimhood. Surrender is trust. That's stage two. And what are you going to do? When you're in the ocean and the tide pulls you under and you're kicking and you're flailing. In the ocean, has you by the balls, so to speak. What then are you going to kick and scream and whine and complain and moan? Shame others, blame others that you're drowning. Gonna kick against the tide? Or are you going to float? That allowance of God in you is surrender. And fucking stop trying to attribute it to religion. God isn't over you or above you. And you are not below God. Surrender to God that is you. You're not trying to swim in this stage of awakening. You're trying to float. Trying to allow. If you make it that far, which most of you have, or you wouldn't be here, being offended by me today, you will go into stage three, and then you will understand that you are with God. You are in motion, you are in stillness. Channel calls it flow. I call it flow motion. You're still, you're moving, all the time. And you still might be in what the fuck about this, and that's okay. You're not trying to define anything. Just moving. With the motion and stillness of God that is you. This is grace. And in final stage four, you are love, you are oneness, you are God. There is a lot in that message. So much. 
so much um, love and wisdom. And I loved how you say flow motion. That's a new word we'll all take away today. But as you were talking about love and compassion, can you tell us about your interaction with Coco the gorilla? How was that experience for you? I believe she had a little bit of a crush on me. And that's a little bit daunting when you have, you know, 500 to 1,000-pound animal, knowing that she wants to take you back into the storage room. But aside from that, <laughs> she likes to tickle. She is in joy. She has the greatest amount of compassion. I felt safe. Mother, nurtured. Mothered. I felt seen. In a way that I didn't have to entertain. She's so innocent. Pure. Animals have the most profound amounts of pure innocence. And we could stand to learn from that, that's for fucking sure. Oh, I did make some promises not to say fuck as many times as I fucking have right now. Oh, fuck. Fuck that. One of our viewers say you and uh, Pamela can go do a, a tour of comedy. <laughs> you make a good pair. She's not going to be pleased that I'm making a sideshow of her body in this moment, as I promised I would not do, but she needs to take herself a lot less seriously. At least there was a disclaimer. But to move on, one of the members of our community has asked, or I've started to say in their question, I love the film, What Dreams May Come, and feel it had much truth in it. Will you please discuss how your actual crossing over to the spiritual world was for you? Was it painful? How you felt leaving your beloved family? And what life is like now that you are not embodied in the I believe we have covered some of that. And many thanks. Much love. I'm so happy you are communicating with us. I'll like plan that day in many ways. I made sure it was perfect for my lovely wife, Susan. And that was first and foremost on the agenda, as is every day, and still is every day. We rode on the bike. We talked. As usual, I was having extreme issues with obsessive insomnia. Many people don't comprehend the pure hell that my wife experienced on my behalf. She is an angel on this earth. And when I finally made my choice, I made the day as perfect as possible and gave her as much hope, as much adoration, as much love, if not more. And I made the day easy. And I planned my demise. It was not painful. As any soul would do, I planned. And did it as quickly as possible. A lot of misconceptions. That it was an accident. It was not. That she would feel negatively about my passing. She does not. She understands. There is nothing to forgive in her mind. She understands every last moment of the hell that she and I endured, that she so humbly endured while caretaking for me with these horrible diseases. So let me make this clear. The depression that I experienced came in the form of anxiety, paranoia, symptoms of a brain disorder that accompanies Parkinson's. It is called Lewy body dementia. And it slowly took over my personality, the circadian rhythms in my body, took over my sanity, a day at a time, a moment at a time. To the extent that it became hell, just to try to be in a body. And for those of you who have watched 
anyone with Parkinson's experience this, then I am forgiven. I did not have a painful passing. There were no drugs in my system. I had been clean and sober for quite a while, albeit painfully. What I regret is not understanding the depths of my own enmeshment trauma that comes from the need to please that started by pleasing my mom. And God, I love her. I love her, and we are so close. And still are, always will be. But I wish I had seen earlier on the stages of enmeshment, the stages of trauma to completely bypass and sacrifice my entire personality for the sake of creating acceptance. To get her to love me, to get you to love me, to get anyone to love me. I wish I could have accepted that I was loved when I was quiet. I was loved when I was offensive. I was loved in all states. But more than anything, I wish for you to accept that. It's a great divide between love and sacrifice. I'm here to bridge many levels of consciousness, and I did that as effectively as possible, but I would have done so more had I not been in the incessant stages of judging myself. And the release of the body caused that forgiveness. Do not feel sorry for me. I am having a fucking blast. I am with Susan, I am with my children, especially Zelda at this time. I can't leave. You are God, heaven is here. And if you make it hell, it will become hell and that will be your experience here. Choose wisely. How did addiction change your life? Because I think members of the community feels like it might have had a role to play leading up to where you were in your life at that time. We're always seeking to escape. Is it alcohol? Is it cocaine? Is it food? <laughs> Channel who and what you are at all times, but do not escape who and what you are. Of course, addiction played a role in everything that I am and everything that I am not. It took a lot of bravery for people in my life to finally come to me and say, you know, you're really fucked up. <laughs> I probably get some fucking help. And then I did. But the pain of not accepting myself, forever bypassing everything, forever sacrificing myself and forgetting who I am, the pain of enmeshment trauma by complete, completely becoming immersed in everyone else's personality was the pain that fed the addiction. And this is what I come to bring forth today. Don't lose yourselves. I never found a certain amount of a safety. And I never gave myself permission to be safe because I was perpetually getting my ass kicked. And I learned to make people laugh or I would be bullied. To make people laugh or I would be judged. To the extent that it was never safe. To really be quiet, to really be introspective, to be shy. Yes, I can be shy. 
You never stop to believe that there's an introspective, meek person behind what you see on screen, and that is the dominant nature of the true Robin that I am. Give yourself permission to be loved exactly as you are, and to know that it can be safe to be who you are. Give your family and friends the opportunity to show you that it is safe to be exactly who and what you are. I just drank that away. It became easier. It became easier to be who you wanted me to be when I drank. And it did make me feel good to give you laughter. And then I would feel better about myself for all the ways that I was judging myself. But don't follow in those footsteps. Learn from me. Learn from me. Know who you are and don't forget it. What's the best way to help others who are deeply depressed or suicidal? And what are the best natural alternatives to antidepressants? Do you have any advice to give on that? Are we going to go to popping pills to popping herbs? Do you think that a pill will even solve the fucking problem? The problem is that you do not give yourself permission to be seen. You do not approve or validate it enough of yourselves to perceive safety in those permissions. This is not something that even a naturopathic cure can resolve. The only resolution is self-acceptance. How can you help someone who's depressed? What a loady fucking question, but listen to them. Hear them and give them space to be safe. Don't push them away when you don't understand them. Don't try to invalidate them by bypassing their needs, their pain. Don't try to make it better. You're not a car in a fucking body shop. You're a human with a heart. For those who experience the dark night of the soul, how does this change when we tra transition from the physical pain? You're really looking to make something better that already is perfect. And when, if you want me to, I can play the devil's advocate. I can be a really fucking badass right now. And we can talk about Satan and Lucifer and hell and all of the things that don't exist until you believe that they do. We can talk about the punishment that you're creating in this lifetime when you carry those beliefs over. Talk made a movie about it. We played an entire role about carrying over the farcical tale of sin into reality. Except in reality, sin is non-reality. Do you believe that God is up in the sky, like in the movie Monty Python, and when you must turn away from the wrath of God, and you bow, and you prostrate yourselves, and then you say, oh, I, I, I fucking avert my eyes from your glory. Do you believe that that happens on the other side? Do you believe that God is angry? He's going to pull out a stick, beat you over the head? What do you believe? What will you care? The ego is quite powerful before transcendence. If it expands you, it can still occur on the other side of the veil until you believe that it is no longer your power or your truth. And then it's over. In the blink of the eye. I had 
done years worth of research on near-death experiencing. Talk to, to the most brilliant souls on the face of Earth and beyond. I understood every possible cultural concept, every possible religion, every possible theology. And it's nothing like that in truth. It's so much more grand than you can ever fathom while in a body. While we are talking about the physical body, what was your life purpose here on Earth? I came to catalyze you, to cause for the medicine of laughter, to bring you laughter in even your darkest times. I came to help you connect and to release judgments of all that you think is really fucked up. I came to bridge the consciousness between what you believe is real and what you believe isn't, and then to cause you to shed those beliefs like skin off of a snake. I gave permission for vulnerability, and I gave permission for all that you are ashamed of to be beautiful. When you left the earth plane, did you go to a place of rest? And are you in a place of rest now still? Who the fuck wants to rest? I didn't have time for that in my human existence. Why would I have time for that now? Is time even relevant on this side of eternity? <laughs> Who does that? Many of you choose to. You create that system and then it becomes such. I don't operate within systems and never have, never did, never will. And what about where you are now there on the other side of life? Is there such thing as in coming back and perfecting what you didn't before? It is perfect. But are you asking for you? Are you asking for me? It took me no time at all to realize, in a blink of an eye that is God, that we are just as perfect and powerful. When will you not realize it? You don't come back because you're trying to fucking fix something. You come back because you fucking want to. It's beautiful. It's powerful. You're grand beings. And you're really, really funny. Do you have any regrets in life? If you were to ask me that when I had a body, I would say, why? Why? Who has time for regrets? And that was a bypass. Of course I had regrets. In one of my more prominent roles, I often stated, have many regrets. It would be untrue to stay otherwise. Earlier when you talked about your laughter and your jokes and how your mind works, you said that it just comes to you. So do you feel like you could call yourself a medium? or the way things just came to you. And the way you played those characters as well, it's like you were able to ch channel a whole different person and become that person as well. Oh, no, that's not it. <laughs> oh, no. It, it was that I did not perceive anyone as separate. 
Of course you could become a role. Belief wasn't vital to my existence that anything would be separate. And it didn't matter. It didn't matter if I did the role adequately. It didn't matter if I missed a line. It didn't matter because it's all perfect. It all flows the way it is meant to. Some of you would follow my mind and say it was quite insane. Wouldn't fucking deny that. But in another way, allowing for that flow and perpetual motion of God, whether God was insulting you, whether God was catalyzing you to think more profoundly, whether God was just being silent. But you rarely saw that role. <laughs> However, you, you don't understand that what I was doing was showing you you and giving you permission to think in ways that you want to when you're not shaming yourselves. I was in response and reaction and response and reaction and showing you you. And we just need to get that, the feeling I'm getting. And hopefully all, we'll be able to. You're all laughing and crying and screaming and, and, and whining and bitching and moaning and creating, separating and uniting and then separating again and coming together in worst case scenarios and my death caused that. I gave you something that's beyond time. I gave you you. Death can't take it away. As a soul that's ever living and an energy being of pure consciousness that we are, would you be able to talk about the Akashic records? Were you in other lives? Did you have other lifetimes experiencing different characters and different experiences? And would you like to talk about them? Well, hello. You wish to talk to Miss Delphire. She was, of course, one of my higher self aspects. She, he, won. You understand the permissions of divine masculine and divine feminine that were given to you in your most loved role through me. Oh, I said I wouldn't do that. Sorry, Pamela. Well, I guess if Mrs. Doubtfire was your higher self, then you sort of did channel her in a way. I gave you permission to release racial tension cultural divides, everything that you believe is fucking real enough to offend you. And then you left. And for a brief moment you felt caught. These records, this thing you call past, it doesn't fucking matter. <laughs> Live, laugh, be, create, enjoy. You're in the best fucking place in the whole universe. Yeah. Is Pamela recording how many times I've said fuck? She will be when she comes out. Oh, I've done it now. So what message do you have for us to fully live our purpose? To find our purpose? Purpose does not happen by accident or coincident. Purpose is intentional living, creation by design. Purpose is the order of your awakening. Surrender to this victim mentality and purpose will become so apparent that she, he, it, the oneness of all can no longer be denied. 
We're all struggling, looking for purpose. Not the Loch Ness fucking monster. You don't have to be a genius. It's not something to ascertain. You're here to love, to laugh, to be helpful. You're here to be compassionate. You're here to connect. You're here by design to be perfect and to accept it as such. You're so fucking beautiful. And so are you. You've taught us a lot when you were here on the earth plane. And we took a lot from you when you were here as well. Can you speak about the learning through the concept of enmeshment trauma? Any specific guidance for the bypassing that experience and finding the true oneness? Observe what you are enmeshed in and observe its unreality. You can only find yourself when you observe how you are incessantly losing and sacrificing yourselves. Observe when you are doing it and stop in that moment even when you are uncomfortable. Be loving. Be compassionate enough with yourselves to stop and observe when you are becoming enmeshed. In those moments when you lose sight of your very being, you don't have to know who you are to learn from this concept. But you can know who you're not. You can know because your body will tell you. Your throat will clench up. Anxieties will prevail. I was incessantly drinking a fuck ton of water. It's because I was bypassing. I wanted to stop and say, can you love me without a joke this time? Sometimes I wish I had. The body will tell you your sweat glands will overly produce. Listen to your bodies. Stop listening as much to your minds. Listen to your heart. Your heart will always tell you. When that is ignored, that is indeed the greatest tragedy in humanity. Speaking of enmeshment, somebody needs to enmesh this body in air condition. Are you comfortable? Is the channel comfortable? Her body is in constant state of energetic release. Okay, just making sure the channel's okay. So moving on, um, some are curious, are you a guide for those here on the earth plane? No, oh, thousands. My work is ceaseless, relentless. Did you think I would rest here? I didn't rest where you are. I am where you are and where I am simultaneously, and there is no rest for me. No rest for the wicked. <laughs> Someone's asking about, I think it's one of your movies, what was Dreams May Come a premonition? Or does the irony of it all just speak to your sense of humor? Oh, well, there were many more premonitions than that. The time in one movie where I stated, by the time you see this, I will be dead. That was the most heartfelt role I could have possibly given you. That was true. You will remember that. What dreams may come? I took this role with confusion and with love, with annoyance and 
Quite frankly, it was pissed off at least 80% of the time during its making, and then simultaneously it cracked me open like a bleeding egg in the face of a hot New York concrete. But it's true. What you believe is what you create. And of course you'll do anything for love. And that's what's so beautiful about all of you. When you leave to go find out about a girl, do anything for love. You spoke a lot about, you spoke, you've covered so many subjects that it's difficult to know where to go next. A lot of people want to ask about your personal life, but they want to know what was the main reason and the cause of you taking your own life. Between my wife and I, my family knew somewhat of its nature, but no one knew it more than Susan. Parkinsonism can slow you down when the neurological system is moving too quickly. And over time, your body will heed that call to slow down. If you completely bypass your entire nature for the amount of time that I did, then of course it seeps into your entire body. The Louis body's dementia that I experienced was the cause, the deepest cause of the anxiety and the paranoid delusions, the slow takeover of my mind, of my relationships, of my life. And it was torture. And I escaped that torture. I don't ask your forgiveness for it. Because you weren't in my body. You weren't in the torture that I was in daily. I fell asleep on the set. And then at home I couldn't sleep. I had to sleep in a separate bed from my wife. My beautiful, lovely Susan. The angel that didn't deserve all of the pain that was caused in those moments. By my own awareness. From this dreadful disease. It wasn't the depression that took my life. I was just done with not knowing who I am. And I was done with the pain. All of us. Do you think your family and Susan knew that you were going through such emotion? You have most certainly Susan mm -hmm. did. I attempted to spare and the how children from... Sorry. I attempted to spare the children from most of it, but of course, they were brilliant. I guess there was a bit of a pause, so. How can we deal with anxiety in our life? Do you have any advice on that? I was joking with you and you didn't laugh. Yeah, there was, <laughs> there was a bit of a pause in the video, so I missed a little bit of it. And most jokes just go over my head anyway. <laughs> I <laughs> don't that. Seriously, right. Would you mind telling the joke again? 
No, you'll catch it when you're ready. Okay. I'll have to watch it again. So the question was, how can some of us that's deal with anxiety in our life? Stop fucking doing what you don't want to do. It's the most simple thing ever. You're walking around in jobs that you don't want to be in, in roles that you don't want to play, in relationships that you don't want to be in, and fuck knows what else. And then you say, proclaim how miserable you are, and then the misery enjoys the company, and you spread that. And as a collective, we have a complexed, com a complex complaining role. If you're incessantly complaining, stop doing what you don't want to do. Is money your god? Is politics your god? It's all human design. What is the beauty in human design that is beyond labeling? It's just your love, your joy. The time when you focus on the simplicity of life that is quiet, apparent, and ever before you. It's only things that we take for granted. Take one fucking look at a third world country and tell me what you have to complain about. And then, let go. Stop doing what you want to do. Forgive yourselves for any condemnation that you're holding. Judging yourself that you've been a complainer. You don't have time for that either. I was short. Love and joy. Doing what you want to do extends that creation of time. Spend it with your loved ones. And just slow down. Learn from me. Please slow down. I guess sometimes we think our problems are so bad that we just can't see past that. We can't see the way out. And I guess that's the most difficult part. But there are people worse off, right? What problems? What first world problems could we possibly have? What problems? Your lives are beautiful. Yet you spend it devastated, fearful, anxiety-ridden, depressed, only because you're just doing what you don't love to do. That's all. I don't want to do that. Don't do it. Simple enough? Very. Very simple. So the channel said that while connecting with you yesterday and during the week, that you had Saint Germain with you. Is there a reason why you have Saint Germain and is there particular reason that you are together? Do you work together on the other side? Or was he just your handler? He is the handler in this moment and has been a role with me in Shakespearean times, has been on stage with me many times. When you believed that I was a man. When you believed that I was Francis Bacon. So much of that humor, where do you believe it comes from? He and I are one. In this role, he attempts to play my handler because that's how fucking cocky he is. No, I won't pardon my language. We hold a beautiful relationship and always have. Oh, that's so beautiful. Do you have a favorite book you'd like to recommend that you loved when you were... Yeah, with us. The sun, my heart. Walden. And watch the movie A River Runs Through It. More importantly, be the beautiful movie. Illuminate the world with your own scenes of creation. So busy looking at the beauty of everything else that's on screen. 
you are on stage and you are the main actors. Show the world the beauty that is you. Stop looking up and out. Look in. You're going to laugh, laugh at yourself. You're going to love, be in love with yourself. And no, you can never be alone. Thank you for that beautiful message. And as we are moving into the beauty of the world, what is most beautiful for you where you are now? You. It's always you. There's always been you. There'll always be you. That almost sounds like it's external by saying you. Something to think about. If you'd like to judge it as such, go right ahead. Hi. I'm just going through some of the questions we have on stream. Good, because this channel can't wait for me to leave her body. <laughs> well, if that's the case, then do you have a final message for us all before we bring the channel back this evening? Oh, you didn't get you didn't get enough. <laughs> We got so much from you this evening, oh well, today, so much more than we could have ever imagined. Just go be without your limits, drop down your walls, stop restricting yourselves. Life is so simple, it's not about things or money. Mm -hmm. It's about people, kindness, the moments in between all of your activity. It's moments when you look up at your wives and husbands and see them smiling gratefully back to you. The moments where you realize that you can touch another's heart. In those moments, that's life. It happens in between all of your busyness. Slow the fuck down. That's all I got. You did demonstrate that in your life. The kindness, the compassion, the love, and the fact that material things don't mean anything. But thank you for that message. And thank you for being here today. On behalf of yeah. everyone that is watching. Thank you for receiving the message. Now, when you're ready, you may return and please return the channel, Pamela, to us. And thank you. It's never goodbye. It's always hello. Till next time. So I'm here. Hi. <laughs> Hi. How are you feeling? Hot. <laughs> okay. Can you get the aircon back on? 
Can you get the aircon on or is it on? Oh, it is on. Oh. Mm. Oh, no. He said the F word how many times? Oh, no. <laughs> Loads of times. But never mind. Um, you had the disclaimer in there, so that's fine. Oh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> never mind. It was so yeah. much fun. And he told, he told a joke, but, you know, I didn't catch it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He's like, you're not laughing. I'm like, sorry. Cursing Susie. Oh, God. <laughs> you guys, like, Maybe it was someone that was so different. <laughs> Maybe someone that was watching could post the, the joke. Because I'm going to have to watch this again because I, I didn't catch it. <laughs> <laughs> but it was a really, really good channeling. It was so beautiful. And he had so much wise words and insights. And it was really Thank incredible. You. And there was a time where he actually listed stages. I think he listed four stages, you know, yeah. um, from love to enlightenment, which was absolutely brilliant. So it was really nice. Mm, really a perfect thing to do. <laughs> mm. Yeah, well, he is authentic, that is for sure. I thought mm. St. Germain would need a little bit more, but it looks like he chose not to. <laughs> All right. Um, I guess I'll see you guys. Looks like on Monday we have uh, probably a live Q&A and then another class Thursday and then um, the Indigo Children Collective on Friday. So... Someone said you gotta pee your pants when you watch this. I'm not going to watch it. <laughs> Just gonna let it be. Thank you, Aaron, for posting that. Okay. I'll see you guys. Looks like on Monday. Thank you, Priscilla. Again, the brilliant Priscilla Lewis at priscillalewis.com. Excellent facilitator and channeler. Um, you will not be disappointed. Thanks, I know. I know. Mm -hmm. Thank you for being here. <laughs> All right. Bye. Guys. Have a good day. I'm good. Bye.